Day. So let's see how this unravels into the gun round, the run boost, as they're going to mop him up here. Zywu with another few. Oh. And there it is. Quick little quad, neat and tidy. <laughs> Hey guys, your boy Concessional here. Today I'm going to give you guys a quick review on the EC2CW, aka the Zywo mouse, the Paris major weapon. This is currently my main mouse and possibly my endgame mouse. I've been using this for a month and I have a really positive experience with this mouse. It's a 77 gram wireless mouse, as you guys may know. The weight balancing is really good. The weight is centered, but... In hand, this mouse actually is a little dense feeling, in my own personal opinion. It's using a 3370 sensor, and the implementation is excellent. As you guys may know, I have been using super lightweight mice, ranging from 55 grams to 64 grams, such as the Jeeper X Superlight, Death Adder V3 Pro, Lambs and Lannis, and the Pulsar X2. And it probably took me like 15 minutes to get used to the 77 gram weight performance on this mouse though is extremely good i didn't encounter any spin outs or anything and the wireless performance using the enhanced receiver is flawless i also tried using the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and it's also flawless now a lot of people might disagree with my take here, but this is a personal preference, but I do consider 60 grams to 80 grams lightweight, and I don't really have an issue at all fragging with this mouse in game. I would say a mouse in this weight category actually gives you a lot more stability and control as opposed to a lighter mouse. You know what I mean? Just a quick comparison. I would say in tag shooters, I definitely prefer the EC2CW for stability, control, and consistency. And for fast-paced shooter games like Apex Legends that I do play occasionally, when you're doing a lot of movement stuff like wall jumping, super jumping, 180, super gliding into tap strafe or whatever, I definitely favor having a super lightweight mouse such as the Jeep or X Super Light or the Pulsar X2. Now... Let me talk about the shape real quick though. Again, there's really not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to the EC2 shape. Everyone is familiar with the EC2 shape. As, far, as a reference, I have a 19 by 10 hand size and my hands falls into the medium category. The EC2 CW accommodates palm grip really well. Although for me, if I were to palm grip, I would definitely prefer having an EC1 CW instead, but you know, it's still palmable and it's quite comfortable, I would say. Claw grip works excellent for this shape and relaxed claw as well. One thing I do like about this mouse though is if you guys can see like right here, there is a front flare towards the right where my pointing finger is. And this is actually insanely good because it actually helps me get a consistent grip every single time you know because my ring finger actually sits on this flare and you know let's say i would if i were to take off my hands off the mouse and you know i want to play again or i want to use the mouse again you know every time i feel that front flare to the right that's just it that's just how i'm supposed to grip the mouse you know what i'm you know what i'm talking about you know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, it's easily one of the most comfortable shapes I've ever tried. Now let's move on to the build quality. Um, as far as build quality goes, um, this is built like a tank. I have absolutely no side flex or creaking even after a month of heavy usage. It's perfect. You know what I mean? Unlike, unlike my Death Adder V3 Pro that I currently don't have because I have to send it to Razer for the third time in a span of six months due to having an encoder issue and right click issue with the ec2cw you also get a matte coating that is extremely grippy for my skin type i don't need any grips on this mouse and the only downside is that it's a fingerprint magnet 
One thing though is that when the mouse the mouse does accumulate sweat i would say or oil and you lose quite a bit of grip but it's still extremely grippy especially compared to like a mouse that is not coated in that situation that just means it's time to clean the mouse or just you know wipe it with a cloth with water or something like that or even alcohol i would say the clicks on this mouse is insanely good They are spammable and they're all, they are on the lighter side. It has a little pre-travel and some post-travel. I really love these clicks. Um, the side buttons are also insanely good. They're nice and crispy. And in my own personal opinion, the placement is perfect. Now the scroll wheel, it's all right. You know, I find it to be a little too defined, but... I don't really have an issue with this in game. Some people might find it a little too loud. I actually do find it a little too loud sometimes, but since I do wear IEMs now, it doesn't really bother me that much. And mouse button three requires a medium amount of force to actuate. Now let's move on to the bottom of the mouse. One of the things I really like about the EC2CW is that the mouse is actually driverless. Thank God I don't have to deal with Razer Synapse and Armory Crate. As you guys can see, we have a DPI button now and a polling rate button. On and off switch with a 2.4 mode and enhanced receiver mode. No Bluetooth. You can also adjust your LOD and etc. So just refer to the manual for that. One thing I don't like about this mouse is that the lowest LOD settings, comparing it to some other mice at one millimeter, the lowest LOD setting on the EC2CW actually feels more than one millimeter. It's definitely higher than one millimeter. You know, um, just a comparison with the Lamzo Atlantis or the Pulsar X2 or even the Superlight, the, any Razer mouse, Viper V2 Pro, Death Adder V3 Pro, at the lowest LOD settings, this actually does track like the lift off distance is actually a bit higher you know compared to those mouse at the lowest setting so just something to keep in mind but personally it doesn't really cost me any issues in game now this mouse comes with the uh, enhanced receiver right here that also serves as a charging dock and i think it's really nice and clean i didn't really get to track how long the battery lasts on this mouse because you know after three to four days i just placed the mouse like that and yeah so probably expect around 55 hours of constant motion at a thousand hertz pulling rate now when you place the mouse in the dock you'll have some light on top so three bars i think three bars is 100 percent two bars is 75 percent and so on just refer to the manual Oh yeah, I almost forgot. These skates, uh, they are black Teflons. They're actually a little too scratchy for my liking, but after a week, it does smooth things out. They are on the control side and they're actually perfect for attack shooters. I really like them and I don't see the need of changing them. Overall, my experience with the EC2CW has been extremely positive. I do prefer this mouse over the Death Adder V3 Pro any time of the day. No abrasive ass texture and a lot more durable. The only thing I'm not a big fan of is the price. I feel like this mouse should have been $120 max with the enhanced receiver. And without the enhanced receiver, $100 max. You know, I can't even lie. The enhanced receiver slash charging dock is really nice to have. And I'm actually willing to pay extra for this. You know what I mean? So yeah, performance, quality, and reliability all in one package. Zowie EC2CW passes the vibe check. And I'll put this mouse in the waifu tier. I highly recommend this product if you're looking for a medium sized ergo mouse. Thank you for watching, guys.
Lucky 